So we're commentating right from here for this historic matchup between the Paralillo and the Damien RO6. <laughs> That's what it says, dude. Damien RO6. R. Damien R. Damien R. Maybe he's a pirate. Who knows? Side note on Ryan Lello. Um, last year's Comic Con, he won the modern portion of it. And he is most recently, he is um, Egg Nine. The Egg Nine champion. That's champion. right. Yeah. So this is a tough match. Damien himself is a very good competitor, too. All right. Fantastic, man. Sounds like we're in for a treat here in the historic uh, tournament of the Magic the Gathering Arena 2020 Championships in partnership with Comic Con Africa Easy Gaming Group and the Geek Home. Once again, thanks to our partners, Comic Con Africa and the Geek Home and our sponsors, Vain Venom Inc. Luck Shack. Ah, oh, geez, sorry. Yola just asked Don't me a question in the me. middle of that and completely <laughs> threw me off my train of thought. So just so everybody knows, blame Yola, okay? Dungeons and Magic, Luck Shack, Rabbit Knoll Gaming, Vain Venom Inc., uh, and two others whose names escape me right now because of your life. just escaped me too. <laughs> oh, wow. Sorry. Sorry to the sponsors for that. Sorry to the sponsors. I'll, I'll sort it out in a moment. Give me one second. I'll get my brain back and we can take it from there. Um, and also, just a side note Crispin and I have been awake since about five this morning. Okay, Adam's Crispin been awake since earlier. five. I've been awake since like three, but that's okay. It's one of those things. This is how we... There we go. We got Dungeons and Magic. We got the Luck Shack. We got Unplug Yourself, Protea Gaming, Rabbit Knoll Gaming, and Vain Venom Inc. Thank you so much to our That's sponsors. It. That's it. Well done, Crispy. 10 points for Gryffindor. Thanks, man. 10 points for, Glyf for Gryffindor. Gryffindor. 10 points for Gryffindor. 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 What do we are? Comes Uro. They're coming to take me we away. Like that Uro's going to get the ban hammer. I think we, all, I think we can Monday. all agree that Uro is going to get the ban hammer on Monday. Um, I think that's pretty much a given at this point. Oh, out comes a Nissa who shakes the world, baby. Damien sitting with Ugin in hand as well and not very far away from being able to cast it. Whew. In fact, now on his next turn, he can cast it simply because Nissa's on the board. So that's going to be a big thing. Scavenging Ooze, grabbing something, not allowing it to pump up for one and gain life. It wasn't a creature card that he got rid of. Pump up the jam. Pump up the screws. Oh, Ooh, claiming the firstborn. Uh, claim the firstborn, yeah. So that's, that's going to be a six damage to face. Or six or damage to Nissa. Or six damage. I would personally go for Nissa. I'd kill Nissa. Yeah, there yeah. we go. Killing Nissa yeah. and then sacking the land to the sacking oven. Sacking the land, getting your food token going and gaining some life. Damn straight. That's how we roll. If I was playing this, I would personally have conceded right now because, ouch. Yeah, no, that, that hurt a lot. And Gigantha on the board. Good grief. Yeah, that's that's a lot of power coming through. Although, Although extinction event, extinction event kind of takes care of that nonsense. So, but it doesn't take care of scoos. No, the scoos is still there. One, two, three, four, five. So two, three away from Ugin. But three damage coming into the face. He could next turn. He could cast himself a 3 3 Hydrate Crisis, um, Damien, or there's a nice growth spiral. That's that's okay. He doesn't, thing. he's got Lelo is stuck, but he seems to have two mana in hand from what I can see there. It uh, could be a scoos of his own coming out for Damien. Yeah, he's definitely the scoos battle. The scoos battles. Lelo has got himself a problem. He's got uh, looks like an overgrown tomb and a swamp in hand. Getting rid of the Nissa from the graveyard, though, making sure she can't come back. Not like this. Not like this. Our uh, judge and co-commentator for the day will also be joining us shortly. Um, we're all literally taking like a five-minute break in between to go do, do life. human things. Do life. Do human things, yeah. Uh, my break's coming up shortly. I'm looking forward to breakfast at lunchtime. Breakfast at lunchtime. Sounds like a movie title. Is lunchtime not called Tiffany's? <laughs> Cheesy. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, that's how we roll. Dreadhorde Butcher coming in. This could be a problem. 
Let's get some fan interaction going over here, guys. Uh, we are going to give the first of the stream giveaway bundles, which is worth about 2,000 Rand. Yeah, we're going to put that out there. That raffle. We're going to start that raffle in five minutes. Okay, so as soon as you see a raffle on the screen, raffle it out and let's let's get that going. Absolutely. A, a very cool um, MTG related bundle worth about two grand. Okay, here we go. Sorry about that. Okay. What have we got? Growth Spiral coming in. Two crashes in hand. He's going to play one out now. It's quite a large one. He's going to go for four. So you'll draw two cards. You'll gain two life. One of those cards is a Casualties of War, which can't hurt right now. That's for sure. Casualties of War in general is just such a power card. It's a very powerful card. Played played at the right time. That is a game changer. So exiling the Scoos with the Scoos. Gaining a life. Getting an extra counter on the creature. Exiling the Dreadhorde Butcher. Another life and another creature, another counter. Claiming the firstborn on the Crassy. This is going to hurt. And then sacking the Crassy to the oven. Casualties of war coming in. Destroying a land, a creature, and an artifact. Going to take care of that oven. Going to take care of that Scooze. And the Blood Crypt to get rid of the black mana source that it gives. And the, the red, I would imagine. Since those are the, the, the least ones that uh, Parallelo has right now. Also, with its dying oozy scoozy, the scoozy gets rid of the crassy and gains a life for Lilo. Okay. It's a very cool bundle we're giving away, including a t shirt, a playmat, some promo packs. Premium promo packs, those things hold some value. I mean, you can pull yourself a card that's worth about a thousand bucks if you pull Uro. Yeah. Foil Uro, that's an that's a easy thousand rand. Well, there you go. That could be something that you pull from there. We've got a 1-1 we got a one -one in the Love Truck Beast down. And Ugin hits the board. How much of a game changer will this be? Ugin is just power all day, every yeah, day. Yeah, all day, Although every day, going for three. To hurt, he's not going to hurt those those food tokens. Though. The food tokens there, but the board That's is clear. That's a life-gaining life -gaining nightmare. Mayhem Devil Mayhem coming Devil in. Mayhem for the things. That's one, two. And there's two, two is all he can get out of it. Extinction event. Three damage to a target. I think this game has swung. Could. He's gonna he's gonna sack two of those and then he's gonna ping Damien for two. So that will take Damien down to three. Although Damien does have the Hydroid Crassus in hand, which can gain him life. Yeah, can definitely gain him life. But and of course the card draw. Having Ugin on the board and the fact that Parallelo is playing top decking right now, no cards in hand. Puts him in a very dangerous situation, and your stomach just yeah. told me that you liked the move that just got pulled. Pulled a Gargaroth, a Heartless, <laughs> and two drown. Heartless acts. Yeah, no, that's that's going to be difficult to turn around right now. Gargaroth is a monster of a card. Damien has With pulled this gain. around. Life gain is so important for Damien right now. Life gain's huge right now. But also that Gargaroth coming down is going to make a big difference. So I think uh, the five minutes is up. Let's uh, let's launch that uh, that raffle. Let's launch that raffle. Alrighty, we are and we're setting the timer for the raffle for ten minutes. And opening it up, you guys know what to do in chat. Get in there. Type raffle to join, guys, and get yourself a pretty cool bundle. We will send it straight to your door. Gargaroth coming down onto the field now. That's a big, big step. Yeah, Dougal 30 in on the raffle there, sneaking her way in. <laughs> hey, Dougal! <laughs> oh, that's funny.
Sorry guys, got distracted there. Howdy, howdy, Dougal. Nice to have you here. Visions to Insanity ZA, also in on the raffle. And my dog is lying against the cupboard and breathing, and the cupboard's ticking away like a clock. It's quite crazy. <laughs> uh, but this this has definitely turned around this game. Getting that Ugin down yeah, really made a huge difference. Such a major turnaround. And he's got three very powerful cards in his story currently. And he's got a handful of... He's got a handful of removal. He's, he's, he's set very well here right now. Oh, Collected Company coming out from Lilo. Hoping to get at least two creatures that are something that he can block with. Although, again, Uro is at 10 loyalty. He can pretty much take care of just about anything on the board. I am going to go run and do some admin things. I will commentate shortly. No problem, dude. I'll do my very best to sound like I know what I'm talking about. Currently can't really see, unfortunately, because of the layout, we can't really see parallel his hand and what he's pulled with that Coco. Hoping he's got something. I'm in love with the Coco. I need I need to have a Red Bull. I'm gonna go do that. Okay, we've got a Woe Strider and a Priest of Forgotten Gods have come out. However, again, like we said, Damien has that hand full of removal and he's going to use it right now. Yeah, and that is definitely going to be game. This is why I love the archetype that is um, that is Saltai. You can turn it around, whether you're on one or two life, you can turn that game around so quickly. There we go. Lelo conceding yeah. that first game. Okay. This game I feels over, says Baldelef. cards on the field at the same time. You know, there's, um, there's only one thing that you can do. Is yeah, go. for sure. It's hardcore. Historic is a very, very tough format at the moment. There are some very powerful cards in there. See the Scarab God in this deck as well, Ashiok, Nightmare's Muse. And I'm back. No, fantastic. Good to have you back. We're just waiting for the last of the uh, sideboarding to finish up. That's an interesting inclusion in the sideboard, the Steward of Elements version of Nyssa. The that's worst? not the OP Nyssa. That's the, the, the Planeswalker deck Nyssa. Oh, yeah, that, that is the Planeswalker deck Very interesting deck, Nyssa. inclusion in it. I guess he's got it for the scry of, of it. I think that's the Nissa from um, Amonkhet or Hour of Devastation. Well, it could be Amonkhet. Yeah, I could be wrong. I'm, I'm half blind, guys. I'm very old as well. So. <laughs> Fluffy Drood is in the raffle. We have our uh, commentator back, so I can go run off Skedaddle and Shish Kebab. Okay, Get don't hurt yourself. <laughs> if at all possible. Wow, that's a power hand that Damien just pulled. My word. Scoos Uro Uro Nissa. Gee whiz. No, it's okay. It's okay as far as hands go. Eh, eh, it's okay. Eh, eh. You know, eh. <laughs> One of those things, I guess. Ah, oh, but Lelo's has the kitty cats. Um, Jonathan. Yeah. Stop entering the raffles, man. <laughs> Just give me a t shirt then. <laughs> it's all I want. It's all I need. 
Okay, Uro coming in early on turn on curve on turn three. Uro onto the board. What does it draw? Mm, it draws a Gargaroth. That's a big card. I like the Elder Gargaroth. It's a good card. Just looking at Lelo's hand though, he does have Coco. He's got Coco, a Mayhem Devil, and a cat in his hand. Coco is John Sack is quite interesting. Yeah. I, I like it. It is very interesting, but um, Lelo enjoys this type of um, building outside of the norm type of stuff. I was also going to ask, has he played anything but Sacrifice decks since Mayhem Devil and the Cat were printed? Probably. No, I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> That's probably why he took... I mean, he was the only one that, that came in with a Sacrifice deck into Egg 9, 9th edition, and he ended up winning that one. You got to play what works for you. Absolutely, you have to play what you're comfortable with and what what works for you. That's the way this game goes. Who's uh, Ryan's got priority? Is there a disconnect? Not that I can see. There may be a. Says uh, Boulder Elf says Ryan can't get away from the graveyard. Yes, that's he does. He does. Oh, there we go. Do, does there we go. Do his uh, his thing. Oh, sorry, I misunderstood. Boulder Elf's message, I thought that there was an error that he could not get away from the graveyard. No. But uh, having played Dredge against Ryan in Modern, um, he is a graveyard fanboy. He and is it, a graveyard fanboy. You know, if it, ain't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Absolutely. Trigger's coming in off of the Mayhem Devil. Yeah, I don't know if that was the best time to uh, to sack that fable uh, passage. Yeah, to sack that fable passage. Looking for the green mana. I suppose he was looking for the green mana maybe to pump the screws. I'm not sure. But um, with when that man on the board. The worst rider could have just sacked the cat, the cat anyway. Yep. But it may have been better for him to not have a cat while there's no food out. Uro coming in. Second Uro. Fortunately, Uro is also a sacrifice. Do you want to? Do you want to get asked an obscure rules question? Well, you can try. I promise you, I probably won't be able to answer it. <laughs> but I'm willing if, to. You know, I'll give it a bash. What the hell, man? If uh, I have a Nissa who shakes the world out, and I play another Nissa, what happens to? And then they both enter, and I choose the legendary. What happens to the legendary? I don't choose. Fucking men. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry about that, guys. This does that too. This does make mana. Um, yes, but it's not that kind of mana. Uh, we do apologize for that. Sorry. Sorry. Um, sorry. Just the question. So, if you've got a Nissa on the board, and then are we talk about Nissa, Nissa who shakes the world? Yeah. Yeah, and then I choose. I choose my legendary to keep. What happens to the other legendary? My understanding of it, and I could be very wrong here, um, but my understanding of it is that legendary goes to your graveyard. Does it die? Is it sacrificed? Is it destroyed? That's a very interesting question. I'm not sure. Uh, the wording that I understood was that you have to pick one to remain on the board. Yes. So, but, it, it, they, so, I so don't, what happens to the one that's not on the board? I think it dies. I think it goes to your graveyard. That that would be what I would say. I might be wrong. It goes to graveyard, but it doesn't die, and it's not sacrificed. It just goes to graveyard. Yeah. So I was right. Yes. Okay. So I was, I, but I was close. It will not trigger a mayhem devil having a second legendary. And oh, sorry. No, it still through. dies, so it will still proc um, things like Judith, but it is not sacrificed. So an extra legendary will not trigger the mayhem dim. Okay, all right, cool. So you could do that. Think that I think I'll solve the three-game matchup here. Absolutely, Lelo pulling that one out of the out of the fire, getting himself a, a, a win. So one all in this matchup. Yolis, yeah, it looks like our, our, um, our raffle is closed. So let's see who our winner is. Me, me, I'm the winner. I won. No, you can't. I why? And no, Jonathan, you also can't raffle again. It's closed. Okay, we're going to pick a winner here. Uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven entries, and the winner yeah. is. You have to count my entries, but you have to. Boulder Elf. Boulder Elf. 
The kid just can't stop can't stop winning at Comic Con. That's terrible. I I think we should say no. You just won the raffle, Bolderov. Good job. Hashtag rigged in chat. <laughs> we do that. Okay, so here we go. Game three of this uh, little bit of an epic struggle here. Reroll it. Reroll. <laughs> Reroll. <laughs> The Scarab God looks spicy. Scarab God is a spicy card. Yeah, it's one of my favorite cards from the the Amon Kep lock. Um, that's for sure. Let's let's have some let's have some fun with the stream, guys. Um, react the in chat. I think that is Cullum. Pop on through into the into the group over here where we are and come comment commentate on the game, bud. Let's get some fan interaction going too. Oh, just I much actually commentate as well instead of me just asking Stuart random questions. questions. I was trying to commentate, but you just like, kept interrupting me, I and know. dropping girders in front of my train of thought. Hello, yeah. Cullum. Current, hey currently, Cullum is sitting on in the historic tournament. Let me have a look quickly. Three Cullum eight. is sitting on a three no for the for for historic current. Wow, so congratulations, well done, man. man! Good going. Actually, cool to watch this game because Ryan's playing the same deck. <laughs> okay. Um, and it's only us two playing John in the whole thing. Wow, that's quite incredible. Yeah, I was really surprised. I feel the deck is insane. Well, he's getting a priest onto the board. Hopefully he can keep it there for a while, although there is an eliminate and an eliminate waiting for him, or a cry of the Carnarium should should Damien choose to go that route. Yeah, Damien Definitely Ramping going for the black. Damien's in a really rough spot here. Right, just yet. Damien's in a really rough spot. Yeah, he is a bit... He's got, he's got no Nissa and he's got no Uro. No Nissa, no Uro. Blue men are waiting, but he is going to get rid of the priest. I'm surprised that these all of the, the Sultai decks have played so far. None of them are running many counter spells at all. Boulderov says, wait, there's only two Jun players? Yes, there are only two Jun players. In, yeah, no, that's what I was so surprised by. In, uh, in Historic um, for, this, for this particular tournament. Okay, Damien has pulled a Nissa. Okay, that's huge. Demi's pulled a Nissa, but, but, but um, Lelo's got triggers. If, He's got things on the board. Unfortunately, he doesn't not, have an overgrown too. Yeah, it's not really so much the triggers. It's um, so he's got a the the game with the sacrifice on Nissa, right? And this is how you win the game. But you've got to make sure that they don't have a three power thing on board. So when you animate the land, they can't claim your land and swing back and kill the Nissa. Sure. That's like it, it's all about that interaction. He's so playing the Nissa out. Power thing on board. Ryan's unfortunately he, Ryan could. Collected company into this. It's a nice addition with Phyrexian Tower into the historic deck. Oh, the card is insane, man. Just trying to see. Turn uh, two collected company helps. Well, Lelo has got a Coco's in his hand, as well as a Dreadhorde Butcher, and I unfortunately can't make out the third card at this particular moment. But there's the Coco. Yeah. Let's see what he pulls off of this. Who wants to laugh? Oh, oh he no. whiffed. Whiff. Complete whiff. whiff. Oh, That's I know unfortunate. That, I know that feeling. That is oh. hardcore. And in game three as well. It's happened to me with uh, I think it was either playing spirits or just banned good stuff. Whiff, whiffing off a Coco is never. No, whiffing off a Coco is never a good thing. Damien in Damien, a very strong position right now. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so tap the swamp, untap it, and go if you want. Well, you could Ugin. He doesn't need to. You can just Eugene for three, yeah. Yeah, no, he's in a very strong position. I turned around. That Coco. I, I would I would casualties here. Get rid of that Phyrexian Tower. Uh, Ryan isn't doing the best on land. Yeah, he's getting, he's doing it. He's destroying a land. And I would imagine he's going, yeah, I think tower's this is gone. the right play. I think this is the right play. And he'll swing with the other, the other land. You, yeah, can also, uh, you can you can also just kill the um uh the uh any of the other two lands because once you kill the creature it means they can't play anything with the tower. Sure. Like the tower is just colorless in a three mana deck. Sure. And but there are one it, there are one drops. Yeah, but you, uh, all you so basically if you kill the stomping ground right, and yeah. you kill and you kill the creature, then all he has is he has to play a cat. He has to draw a cat and play a cat and then. He only has access to two black mana. That's all you'll have in the entire game. Yeah, Boulderoff in chat says woofing on Coco is probably GG. Yeah, I think that's that's where the game turned huge was that woof yeah, on the Coco. Yeah, that feels so horrible to watch. Oh. 
I've been on that end so many times. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you guys can explain to our non-Magic um, viewers what whiffing the Coco means. So you get to look at the top six cards. You get to put two creatures that cost CMC three or less, mana cost three or less, and then um, you get to put them directly into the battlefield at instant speed. Uh, it, it's incredibly powerful, but looking at the top six cards, if you have uh, in this jungle list where you're playing... That's it. That's the um, game. Where you're playing four claims and four cocos and four uh, other